and we're back, and we're gonna go talk to uh, Pep 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 and Nick Nick Bell Tyne Tyne. Well, well, Nicky Valentine walks into my office for a change. What can I say, Piper? You, me, and hard luck all seem to run together like acid rain down an old sewer. You, uh, including your client here in that analogy? Oh, that's so, nice. You two are finally letting me in on this little case of yours. What's the story? Do I have to... Kellogg kidnapped my son. Handed him over to the Institute. I'm going to find them. And make them regret what they've done to me. The Institute. Oh boy. I've been investigating these creeps for over a year now. <laughs> the Commonwealth's boogeyman. Feared and hated by everyone. True enough. Sometimes they snatch people in the middle of the night, and sometimes they leave old synths behind to remind us that they're out there. But to this day, there's one thing nobody really knows. Where the Institute actually is, or how to get in. Exactly. But there's one person who has to know, right? The guy who just handed them Sean. Kellogg. Huh. Well, he's dead. Whatever you're thinking, it doesn't matter. He's dead. Yeah, I knew he wasn't gonna go quietly the moment I saw him. So, a um, murderer and a kidnapper gets his brains blown out by an avenging parent. <laughs> huh. Be a great ending if we didn't still have the biggest mystery in the Commonwealth to solve. I had no choice. He wasn't gonna talk. Even if I had a way of bringing him in alive. Gets his brains blown out. Huh. His brains. You know, we may not need the man at all. You're talking crazy here, Nick. Got a fault in the old subroutines? Look, there's a place in Good Neighbor called the Memory Den. Relive the past moments in your mind as clear as the day they happened. If anyone could get a dead brain to sing, it'll be Dr. Amari. The mind behind the memories. Who the fuck's that? Who's this Dr. Romari? I'll let her give you her life story in person. Let's stay focused. Hmm. I guess we're gonna need a piece of Kellogg's brain. Enough gray matter to bring to Amari and find out if this is going to work. Jesus, Nick. Gross. Seriously? I know it's grisly, but what choice do we have? We got no leads. Nothing. That old Merc's brain just might have all the secrets we need to know. What exactly do we need, Nick? Kellogg's brain. It's a long shot, but Dr. Amari just might be able to get it jump started. See what the old Merc knew. Alright. Actually, I think I already have something. Kellogg had this thing attached to his head. Cybernetics, huh? We may have just won the lottery. Whether we're riding this crazy brain train or not, we can't all go running across the Commonwealth, so. Who's coming with you? I have to go to the memory den either way if I'm going to introduce you to Omari. But if you want to head there together, just say so. Anything else you can tell me about the memory den? It's in Good Neighbor, a little slice of trouble northeast of ways. The memory den ain't just a fancy name, it's literal. Oh. A lot of people give up all their caps just to relive the good parts of their lives. Over and over, but not us. We're gonna try to dive deep into someone else's mind. I can meet you there, or we can head out together. I'll just keep dancing. I already have someone with me. I'll meet you there, Nick. All right. See you at the den. Don't worry. We're gonna get your boy back. Just a few more steps. While you two are out, I'm gonna do some more research. I'll be here if you need me. All right. Oh, so this is like all the. It's not even the whole article. Unless, uh... no, so no way to. Oh, you just. Okay.
Oh, you know what else? We can give the the dude the paint. Never thought a reporter could consider themselves. Shut up. Anything I can do? You just say the word. So what? You're in the Brotherhood of Steel now? Only a little bit. Please tell me that's him. Abbott. You're back. You find that paint? I did. Wasn't easy, but I found some. Yeah. Now that's damn fine news. Why don't you go ahead and paint the first stroke? Let's see how the shade matches up. Hey, Abbott. That's a good shade of green. The wall sure seems happy with it. Happy to help. It's been an honor. It's nice to work with someone who knows how to show respect. There's your payment, and a little bonus for getting the right shade of green. Don't do anything with it I wouldn't do. You earned that, soldier. If you have a... Hey. Go ahead. What, what do you want? Excuse me, Paladin Dance? Do you want to have that talk now? Does it have anything to do with the Brotherhood? I wouldn't necessarily say that. This isn't a formal meeting. I simply want to clear the air. I think we may have gotten off on the wrong foot when we first met, and I feel like I owe you an apology. Expecting you to embrace the standards of the Brotherhood without having a history with us was unfair. And given that you've adjusted so well to our beliefs, I don't think I needed to push so hard. That's very kind. Thank you. Well, you deserve it. When I was an initiate, my sponsor was Paladin Creek, toughest squad leader I ever served with. He was a model soldier, embodying the values every trainee was striving to achieve. Fiercely loyal, secure in his beliefs, and brave to a fault. From the moment I was assigned to his squad, I was singled out. It felt like he was pushing me harder than the rest of the team. I fought by his side for years, and we had some seriously close calls. But he never explained to me why I was treated that way. Did you ever ask him why? I'd considered it, but unfortunately, I never had the chance. After I was promoted to Paladin, and I'd moved on to my own squad, oh, no. I received word that Krieg was killed at Adams Air Force Base. The news was like being kicked in the stomach. I mean, I'd lost some of my brothers and sisters before, but his death... Well, it really got to me. It's taken me a long time to realize it. But the reason Krieg was so tough on me is the same reason I'm so tough on you. It's because I believe in you. And I don't want to see any of your potential go to waste. What happened at Adams Air Force Base? Back in the capital wasteland, the, the Enclave. Was at war with a traitorous group of rebels who called themselves the Enclave. I wouldn't call they them rebels. A <clears throat> man post at the remains of Adams Air Force Base, just outside of Washington, D.C. The Brotherhood spearheaded an assault on the command post, which was ultimately successful, but costly. Quite a few soldiers died in that battle, and Paladin Creek was among them. He made his mark on history, and whether you choose to believe it or not, you have the potential to do the same. I'm flattered. I'm flattered that you have so much faith in me. You've earned that faith by your own hand. Well, I've said what I had to say, and I hope that it meant something to you. I trust you'll keep this in confidence, of course. Some of that information was of a personal nature, and, well, I'd like to keep it that way. I love Dance. He's such a cool dude. But, we have to go and find that one place we're going to, so... This place? Yes, okay. Let's just go to the common and we'll fucking walk from there. Oh, wow, look at that. The Assaultron. Shrexting me on skeep. Let's 
Say a new radio signal was found? Calling all Silver Shroud fans. I got an urgent mission. If you're a true fan, stop by the memory den and to talk to Ken Carl. Every map of this area we've the Silver Shroud the needs you. The big red. Every map of this area we've recovered has the common mark. Of Galaxy News Radio. When evil walks the streets of Boston, one man lurks in the shadows, shielding the innocent, judging the guilty. That guardian is the Silver Shroud. Today's episode, A Slaying in Scully Square. Uh, uh, just uh, down this alley. Oh, well, well, well. Looks like someone got lost on the wrong side of the tracks. <laughs> yeah, wrong side of the tracks. I I'm just meeting a friend. No business of yours, uh, perhaps I'll just call him. Now, if, if you'll excuse me. Not so fast, fancy man. Your wallet, and that fancy briefcase kick. Hand him over, now. I most certainly will not. Do you have any idea? Oh, jeez, Louise, why'd you go and do that? Because he could have made us, that's why. You want to spend another stretch in the pokey? Now, let's see what's in this fancy case. Nothing. Papers, no cash, it's worthless. Ah, get his wallet. Suit like this has got to have something. All right, all right, let's see. 20 bucks, a driver's license. Oh, man. We done it this time. You know who this is? We just wasted Mayor Murphy. What? The Mayor Murphy? I don't think. What in the blazes was he doing up here? Up in Scully Square. A mystery, to be sure. Who said that? Show yourself. You have murdered a man in cold blood. Justice must be served. Afraid of the silver shroud. You hear me? Come out and I'll do you like I did the mayor. I'll do you Death like has I come for you, evildoer, and I am a shroud. <laughs> no. My work here is done. Or is it? What brought you to Scully Square, Mayor Murphy? The journey that left you dead and Boston leaderless. Why venture? <laughs> Emerge from the shadows, villain, or face the justice of the Silver Shroud! What will become of our stalwart hero? Find out what happens next week on another exciting episode of The Silver Shroud! You've been listening to Galaxy News Radio, a wholly owned subsidiary of Galaxy News Network. Feeling a bit nostalgic? Galaxy News Radio. GNR? When evil walks the streets of Boston, one man lurks in the shadows, shielding the innocent, judging the guilty. That guardian is the Silver Shroud. Let's see if there's more than one. episode, the mystery of Mayor Murphy. Slowly now, reveal yourself. I'm not gonna make this easy for you. Silver Shroud, fret not, old oh. friend. It's only me. Mistress of mystery, what brings you to Scully Square on such a foul night? Tracking our dear Mayor Murphy, who is up to some mischief. The mayor? So he wasn't here in some kind of official capacity. Hardly. Here, let me show you the contents of the late mayor's case. But these are real estate papers, leases and deeds for most of the businesses in Scully Square. Indeed they are, my intrepid investigator. It's
it would seem our Mayor Murphy was involved in a rather crooked caper. He was here to meet with some other mysterious malefactor. So, Mr. Mayor, I hope you found the place all... What the? Silver Shroud! And Mistress of Mystery? And the Mayor? Dead? That Fady, the infamous Mampos! So, you were meeting with Mayor Murphy. But why? Tell me, and you may yet live. Best listen. Stop. I just realized the Silver Shroud is is literally Wes to my friend, I forget Vince. his fucking full name but he's the guy who plays I'll never talk. the fucking Don't Imperials and the Imperial head. Guards and Oblivion so and Treogorath oh my god oh my god um Sorry, I just had a ner nerdgasm and I had to tell everyone about this. Death has come for you, evildoer, and I am its shroud. Shroud this crime fighter. <laughs> Later, suckers. Silver Shroud, you're shot. Uh, just a graze. You must go after him. Awesome. This is like walks the streets of Boston. One man lurks in the shadows, shielding the innocent, judging the guilty. That guardian is the Silver Shroud. Today's episode in the parlor of mysteries. Jasmine, chamomile, pain, ecstasy. This can only be the dead. Of mysteries. Shh. Be still, sweet shroud. I removed that scumbag slug, but you're sick with fever and still suffering. Mistress of mysteries, no. I'm all right. But the mayor, Fat Fady, he stumbled upon a most sinister plot, old friend. Ha! No, dear heart. The shroud stumbled. The Fuck. mistress maneuvered. I knew of the mayor's. What's mistress. going on at Faneuil Hall? Oh shit, I'm out of here. I followed him to that fateful uh -oh. meeting with Fat Thing. I was about Fuck. to. Attention! Silver Shroud and Mistress of Mystery! This is Chief Porcaron of the Boston Police Department! You know you're in there! You are both wanted in connection with the murder of Mayor Murphy! Come out with your hands up! Hmm. It would seem that our leaving the scene of the Scale slaughter was terribly timed. Incurring the wrath of Boston's finest is an unfortunate and unexpected annoyance. Unexpected by us, maybe. But perhaps not by Fat Faye. Ah, I'm starting to to see into his twisted plan. Ah, damn this gunshot wound. Look, heroes, we can clear this up. Come out now, unarmed. 
I'll see that you two get the best warriors in the city! Hm. Excuse my assumption that even the most astute attorney couldn't help us now. You're right, mistress. We must away from your den and evade the police. Clear our names and take Fatey down. That's it! We're coming in! Silver Shroud, mistress of mystery, hands up for order of the Boston Police. Police. The Boston Police. <laughs> Okay. It's not a good noise. Chief Gordon, I am Death's Shroud, but you are undeserving of my terrible justice. Who the fuck are you? My mercy. Good chance. Stop or we'll shoot. Men, open fire. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't handle this. This is too fucking funny. To see Wes just... Just... <laughs> Holy cannoli! It's the nightmare of night! The deceptive detective! Hey, the hold up there. First time in good neighbor? You can't go walking around without insurance. Quite right, you custodian of criminality. You better back For off. Or you're the one who's gonna need insurance. Whoa, whoa, hey. All right. It is we'll just... I. Say your insurance is paid up for now, okay? I have clouded Polly's paltry perceptions Someone to gain access to your den of depravity. Sorry, boss! I... They're a guest. You lay off that extortion crap. What do you care? He ain't one of us. No love for your mayor, Finn? I said let Hancock. Go. You soft, Hancock. You keep letting outsiders walk all over us. One day, there'll be a new mayor. Come on, man. This is me we're talking about. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Why'd you have to go and say that, huh? Breaking my heart over here. Now I know you had old Finn handled back there, but a mayor's gotta make a point sometimes. You alright? Ghoul? You. You're a ghoul? That's right. Oh, hello! Face. I think it gives me a sexy King of the Zombies kind of look. Big hit with the ladies. Listen, a lot of walking rad freaks like me around here. So you might want to keep those kinds of questions on the low burner next time. Good neighbors of the people, for the people. You feel me? Everyone's welcome. Hey, good neighbor. Good neighbor? That what you call this place? That's right. 
We cobbled this little neighborhood together out of the freaks and misfits that just wouldn't be accepted anywhere else. You'll see. You make enough friends <coughs> here, you'll call this place home soon enough. So long as you remember who's in charge. What happened to his eyes? Mayor Hancock? Too bad about Finn. Gonna miss him next super mutant attack rolls round. Oh well. What can I do for our newcomer? Well, what's your story? What's your story, Hancock? My favorite subject. I came into this town about a decade ago. <coughs> the smoothest set of skin back then. While I was busy making myself a pillar of this community, I would go on these, like, wild tears. I was young. Any chems I could find, the more exotic, the better. Finally found this experimental radiation drug. Only one of its kind left, and only one hit. Oh man, the high was so <coughs> worth it. Yeah, I'm living with the side effects, but hey, was not to love about immortality. You're immortal? Well, not exactly. Ghouls just age really, really slow. Something about the rats, maybe? Oh, who knows? All that chem use definitely prepared you for a career in politics. People respect me because I don't put myself above them, all right? I sling and shoot up just like the next guy. Now, before you bring me down, is there anything else you need? Tell me more about this town of yours, good neighbor. It's all about the people, understand? They're freaks, misfits, and troublemakers. And that's why I love them. Everyone here lives their own life, their own way. No judgments. Now, was there anything else? Looking for work. Work, huh? Hmm. I'll tell you what. I got reconnaissance needs. There's a lot of weird talk coming in about a place called the Pikmin Gallery. It's raider territory up there, but they've been quiet. Like uncomfortable post coitus quiet. Snoop it out and give me the word. What else can you tell me about Pikmin Gallery? Nothing. That's why I'm paying you to go out there. Scout out Pikmin Gallery. On it. Cool. Be thorough, okay? I'm not paying for a look-see. Find out what's really going on there. <clears throat> Daisy discounts. Brotherhood of Steel. Better stay out of good neighbor. All I'm saying. Oh, new face walks into my store. And you're not even screaming yet. Very polite. Um, did you say something about people screaming at you? That's right. Some newcomers have never seen a ghoul before. Can't handle a friendly face, I say. So you need some supplies? What's it like, you know, being a ghoul? Well, it's a lot worse when people always ask me <sighs> about it all the time. But I guess I can't blame them. On the upside, I look pretty good. For being over 220 years old. Now, will you buy anything? Wait, you're 220 years old? Okay, okay. It's more like... 270 years, but don't go blabbing that to everyone. Being a ghoul means you live a long time. You stop counting birthdays. Do you know what it's like being that old? Uh, yes, I do. Actually, I do. <laughs> well, now you're just making fun of me. If you were as old as I was, you would have been around since before the war. So let's hear it. Come on, tell me what the world was like before the war, if you're so ancient. I had a beautiful house, white picket fence, and a lawn with the greenest grass you'd ever seen. It was... peaceful. It was, wasn't it? Sorry, last thing you want to see is an old lady tearing up. Well, you're either the most well-preserved ghoul I've ever seen, or you're the second best bullshitter and good neighbor. Ah. It's the truth. All of it. You know, if you haven't already, you should check out the Hotel Rexford. There's another pre-war ghoul hanging around there. Well, we should get back to business. What are you picking up? What kind of things do you sell? Oh, a bit of everything. <clears throat> Canned beans to kills. 
I try to take every weird bit of junk that yeah, comes. Yeah, I got so it. So are... yeah, yeah, I got it. Let's see what you have. Remember, no returns, exchanges, or death threats. Do, 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 do. Charging laser sniper rifle. Hmm. What the fuck is this? Jeez. Alright, yeah. Why are you bothering with that junk? Because I, I sell it. I, I sell it. I make money. You're good. Alright. <clears throat> Everything here is guaranteed to injure, maim, or kill at your discretion. Except me. I only kill when I want to. Who... what are you? I'm a woman, baby. Can't you tell? Oh, yes! Oh, of course you are. It's just... all those metal plates. You're a robot, right? A very womanly robot? Designation, Assaultron. Designed to provide a variety of security-related tasks to the modern man. Runtime conclusion. Why work for the man when you can work for yourself? New designation. K-L-E-O. Cleo. Fully independent small business owner. Robot enough for you, smooth talker? Now what are you buying? Your... An Assaultron? That's what my makers called me. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm a woman. And I run a store that sells very large guns. So what'll it be? I'll take a look, sure. Purchase a variety in case of boredom. Let's see what you got here. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Um... Party starter. Holy shit. Um... You actually have plasmas. Do you have any other plasma? No, it doesn't look like you would. So that's a little bit of a shame. Um... Let's see. <clears throat> Fiery. Damn, I would love... What is this? This, this piece of shit. Never mind. Um, so... Yeah, this is certainly very tempting. Okay. Oh, fuck. I still have Kellogg's pistol. Oh, shit. Oh, well. Um... Kurt Cobain's friend? Yeah, you can take that. Okay, let's see this gun. This actually has a fucking scope. Well, <clears throat> I can say I've seen everything. Let's remove this scope, please. Yeah, I don't want that fucking retarded scope on this. Fucking adhesive. Can I just flat out remove this? Nope. Apparently not. God bless. Alright, uh, next time I'll fucking fix this gun. <laughs>